Good morning, DC. This is Glenn Calloway from the basement. It's Sunday morning and I'm a little upset. There's more controversy in the VC. More drama after we've all done videos now saying, let's all get along, peace and love. Uh, let's respect each other. Let's just talk about records. Um, you know, all that stuff. All the Save the Whales, Greenpeace stuff we've been hearing over the past few days, which I got sucked into believing people were uh, really sincere. Yesterday, I see a video from one of my best friends on the VC, my neighbor, a man I've grown to love like a brother, Robert Hagerman from Robert's On Your Turntable. Yes, Robert started this drama. He's gonna have to live with it. I don't know any way out, Robert, unless you uh, make a uh, video apology to everyone on the VC. Robert did a contest entry for another Robert, Robert Fitham, on his uh, kind of tongue-in-cheek uh, drama in the VC contest where you had to uh, slam an album or an artist or something. What's Robert do? He says, Bob Dylan can't sing. Yeah, that's what he said. Bob Dylan can't sing. <sighs> I didn't sleep a wink. I actually was crying over this. Um, Robert showed two albums of Bob's, the first one and uh, the uh, Christian album, Slow Train Coming, both of which albums I like. I actually think Bob sings really well on Slow Train Coming and his first album is, you know, it's the, it's the folky uh, Woody Guthrie influence in his vocals. So if you're slamming Bob, you better be slamming Ramblin' Jack Elliott and Woody Guthrie and Cisco Houston and uh, everybody else uh, that uh, is revered in folk circles. So I'm here uh, just to try and teach everyone about Bob singing how you may learn to appreciate it and just about singing in general and uh, I've written out a whole page of stuff because I didn't think I'd be able to say it off the top of my head so some of this I'm gonna read um, first of all here we start with being a good singer is far more diverse and complicated than just having a pretty pleasant voice. Let's break down singing. What's involved? How about musical phrasing? How about rhythmic choices and rhythmic ideas? Conveying thoughts and ideas. Dynamics, very important in all music. Articulation and enunciation, enunciation, timing and feel, vocal inflections, energy and tone. Can you think of one other artist where those descriptions I just gave point more towards an artist than Bob Dylan? He fits every one of those points. He's a master at all of those points. Bob's unique. He's expressive. He's like a speaker sometimes, not a speaker like a stereo speaker, someone giving you a speech as much as he's a singer. He delivers the songs with character. Bob has character in his vocals. 
Sometimes it can seem like a conversation between you and Bob. The dark protester in Masters of War, the storyteller in Hurricane. Hurricane, fantastic song. I'm gonna go through some albums later. Oh, I didn't bring Desire with me. That's one I wanted to point out. Okay, how about Sharp Criticism? Ballad of a Thin Man. You know that something's happening, you just don't know what it is, do you, Mr. Jones? He walks into the room, and it's an incredible song. How about Bob Dylan can feel urgent to chastising from... He... he he can, oh, okay, Bob can feel urgent in his songs. He can chastise in his songs. His, sometimes his songs go from fearful to comical. Fearful in the old, um, his political protest days. Hard rain's gonna fall. How much more fearful can you get than that? Comical. All I really want to do. He can be angry about idiot wind off of blood on the tracks. He can be lonely. Almost all of blood on the tracks. That album is about his separation and divorce from his wife of many years, Sarah. Jacob Dylan, his son said, that's my parents breaking up on record. Bob denies it. But I think everyone knows. You just listen to the album. His voice is multi-shaded. So next, what do you, uh, hold on a second. So I think um, what you need to do is next time you listen to Bob, take all this stuff into consideration. I'm going to give you some, for those who just ignore Bob because they think they don't like his voice, I'm going to give you some ideas on stuff to listen to in a minute. But you got to decide what you like about listening to music. Break it down. Is it just you want some background music and happy and everything's really produced just perfectly? There's not a note out of place. The vocals are just perfect. You know, that's why I don't like, I hate to slam music. I'm not going to say I don't like it, but I don't own any of the albums because I wouldn't play them. The bands that came in that era of Styx, Journey, uh, Kansas, they're all, there's some great guitar playing on that. And obviously the, the singers are, are awesome. Everything's great. I'm not putting it down at all. It's too perfect for me. I, I, don't, I don't feel it has any soul. Um, it's technical. So when you're listening to music, do you like that? Is that what you like? Do you like something that's just no perfect, no, no offense, offensive material or in terms of your ears, not in terms of language. Um, like, um, I like raw music. The Rolling Stones, I mean, especially live, they're just so loose and raw. That's why they're the greatest rock and roll band in the world. The faces were like that too. Till Rod decided to uh, think he was sexy. Um, so, I think listening to music has all to do with emotion, feel, and power. Bob has that in spades. So now, I want to just talk about a few Dylan albums. I had a friend who I worked with for 25 years, my age. Um, he didn't like Bob Dylan. Until... Bob's album, Time Out of Mind, came out, which I think won Record of the Year at the Grammys. Produced by Daniel Lanois. This is a great frickin' album, and I think, I mean, for most artists, you say, hey, okay, start at the beginning and work your way through and watch their growth and everything. I think with Bob, it doesn't work that way. So this is an album that I would definitely seek out and listen to. It's a great album. There's some just amazing songs on this. Um, Love Sick. His vocal delivery is kind of cool on this album. 
Um, not dark yet. What a beautiful song. So anyway, this is great. Produced by Daniel Lanois. So if you're a fan of U2, uh, Joshua Tree and albums like that, they have a certain feel. They have a Daniel Lanois stamp on them that is on there on his Daniel's solo albums and on the albums that he produced for other artists. And uh, the, the, the albums he did with Dylan, they have that kind of feel. I'm not comparing them to U2 in any way, just the feel of the production. This is the other one he did with Daniel Lanois, Oh Mercy. What a great album. Cuts off of this album, Ring Them Bells is beautiful. Everything is broken. I freaking love that song. Political World, the first song, is good. So there's two albums you might want to start with. Oh Mercy and then Here's another one that might interest you. Infidels. Fantastic album. And why you might be more drawn to that is because the guitarists on this album are Mark Knopfler and Mick Taylor. So Joker Man, Sweetheart Like You. I mean, just really a really uh, strong, strong album. Infidels that came out in the 80s, I believe. Another one that came out in a later period. I'm trying to think of when it was released. Uh, I can't see it in the light here, but Love and Theft. This is a fantastic album for anybody who's not a Dylan fan. Great place to start. Okay. What else? So, Bob's got quite a few periods. One I'd like to mention is the Folky period. That's the first period. And then Robert showed his first album, which is this one. Now, that is complete folk album, Woody Guthrie influenced harmonica, guitar. Bob does a lot of covers on this, of traditional covers of these songs, like uh, Man of Constant Sorrow and um, Freight Train Blues. Highway, or it's House of the Rising Sun. Um, not the first Bob Dylan album you should listen to, in my opinion. If you want Folky Bob, you gotta go with this one. Because that's what influenced everyone. This has got Blowing in the Wind on it, which may be one of the greatest, strongest songs ever written. Girl from the North Country, beautiful song. And if you like Girl from the North Country, maybe you like Nashville Skyline, where he does the duet with Johnny Cash on Girl from the North Country. Try that. Masters of War is on here. Don't Think Twice It's All Right, another incredible song. Oh, what else is on here? Hard Rain's Gonna Fall. I mean, just an amazing, amazing album. This changed the Beatles, this album. No more She Loves You, Yeah, Yeah, Yeah. No. Hey, You Got to Hide Your Love Away. Norwegian Wood. John, you can hear John's voice. He tries to sound like Dylan. Okay, what else? Okay, then there is the great trio of albums, Bringing It All Back Home, which is the first kind of rock album. One side's electric, one side's acoustic. The acoustic side has Mr. Tambourine Man. Maybe you like the Birds version of Mr. Tambourine Man. Try Bob's, it's great. It's All Right Ma, I'm Only Bleeding. Incredible song. Subterranean Homesick Blues, the song I consider the first rap song. 1964, 65, whenever that was out. I mean, come on, he was so ahead of his time. So, bring it all back home, electric one side, acoustic the other. The amazing Highway 61, Like a Rolling Stone, changed everything like a Rolling Stone. Six minutes long on the radio. What AM radio station ever played a six minute song? Just dripping. How does it feel? Bob Dylan, Like a Rolling Stone. And the artists who played on this album, Al Cooper, Mike Bloomfield. Man, come on. Who else? Charlie McCoy on guitar. Just a, a masterpiece. And then my favorite, Blonde on Blonde. Maybe you like the songs you heard on the radio from Blonde on Blonde. Just Like a Woman, I Want You. 
rainy day woman. Everybody must get stoned. Blonde on blonde. That thin mercury sound. You listen to Bob's voice in this, it sounds like mercury dripping all over your ears. Incredible album. Sad Eyed Lady of the Lowland. Took up the whole side of the record. It was mind blowing. The whole side. It's an incredible song. My second favorite Bob Dylan album. Back to kind of, he, he did these albums that are uh, rock oriented, uh, trippy, uh, incredible records. And then he did an about face and comes out with a folky album again. Very sparse album. John Wesley Harding. I love this album. His voice changed. Everything changed. All on the watchtowers on this album. Of course, Jimi Hendrix did an incredible version of that, but it's an incredible song. The other great song on this, The Ballad of Frankie Lee and Judas Priest. Incredible. What other CDs did I want to show here? I think I've shown them all. One more I want to mention, Desire. Check out Desire. It's got Hurricane on it. Hurricane's just an incredible song. It's great. Now, that Desire album came out about the, around the time of the Rolling Thunder shows, which were, you know, still considered one of the great tours in the history of rock music. I saw two of the shows in Toronto, and, man, I'll never forget them. They were incredible. Bob was great. So I hope I've opened your ears to give it a chance try and seek out some of the albums I mentioned if you have Spotify or whatever just take it the way it should, go on the, the right course to listen to Bob and appreciate him there's a reason why John Lennon and George Harrison and uh, Jimi Hendrix and Pete Townsend and Keith Richards and uh, Eric Clapton and anybody else you want to mention mention loves Bob Dylan there's a reason for it try and figure it out maybe it's you maybe you're just not trying hard enough to get it I love you all I was just teasing about the drama it doesn't matter you can like Bob if you like him or don't like him Robert I love you um, thanks for watching take care